Yo, how's it going everybody? It's your boy Brian here about to give you a basic running tutorial. So the objective of this tutorial is to break down the technique in running and hopefully give you guys some coaching points so that if you are interested in running or you are a runner and you come to the realization that you frequent injuries and you avoid running because you know your low back hurts or your knees hurt and everything so that's what this tutorial is for is to hopefully reduce the injuries that you are currently having and it's also for those beginners who are thinking about running and just don't know how to do it because it's not as simple as just going out on the road hitting the road and just going for a jog or going for a run or anything like that because there is technique behind it and you have to be mindful when you do it so that you can uh, reduce the probability of injury so that's what we're going to cover today so without further ado let's get into it first thing i want to go over is stride flight time and cadence so your stride is going to be limited by how far your hips can actually open up so if you see right here my right leg is in front of my left leg and this is my typical stride length you don't want to go around messing with your stride and trying to extend further route because that's going to throw off where you impact because you always want to land center of mass. When you land center of mass, your body is properly absorbing the impact from running, right? It starts with the big toe to the midfoot to the ankle to the knee and all the way up. So when you extend your stride where your foot lands away from your center mass your body's not properly absorbing that impact and that can send shock waves into your back and it can shock send you know shock waves to your knee because the prop the proper joints muscles ligaments and all that stuff is not properly engaged so don't go around messing with your stride length what you really want to do is extend or shorten up your flight time now your flight time is the distance that you cover between each stride. So when you talk about extending your stride, what they really mean is extending your flight time. So for instance, if you are jogging, which is the slowest form of running, if you're jogging, your flight time is gonna be very short because you are not covering that much distance because you're running slower. When you're running, Right? Typically when you say you're going for a run or something like that, you're doing a race pace or you're setting a pretty good pace whenever you run. Right? It's a little faster than a jog. So your flight time is going to be like right in the middle between a jog and a sprint. A sprint, you're going to have the most flight time because you are in the air longer because you're covering more distance. And the more power that you put into each of the uh of your stride when you're pushing off like in a sprint for instance you're turning over your stride as fast as you can while covering the most amount of distance that you can so flight time is how long that you are in the air uh between each stride next you have your cadence your cadence is going to be related to your pace uh, they say you should aim for around 180 uh, impacts per minute so each time that your foot hits the ground uh, should be 180 per minute and that sets your pace so cadence is important because it allows you to understand how f much more flight time that you need between each of your stride and it tells you if you're slowing down or going fast like say for instance if I'm maintaining a six minute mile pace at 180 uh, steps per minute and I don't, I'm not timing it or anything like that. And if I'm counting my cadence and I say, okay, I am starting to do 160 strikes per minute, that means I am slowing down because I have less uh, steps per minute. That means my flight time has decreased and my pace has slowed down. So if I want to stay at that pace, I need to make sure that I'm covering more distance and um you know covering more ground so that's why cadence is important and also it gives you uh it's like rhythm right it's you can use a metronome and that kind of 
will be able to train your cadence if you understand uh, the metronome. So the next thing is your upper body. Uh, this is very, very simple here. So typically what you want to see is your arms or your elbows making 90 degrees. So your arms should be in sync with your legs. Every time that you go up with your left leg, your right leg should be going up as well. And every time your left leg goes back, your right arm goes back, your right leg goes up, and your left arm goes up. All right. So when you're starting off and you're trying to get your arms in sync with your legs, whenever you're doing drills, you want to over exaggerate your arm swing. So every time your right arm comes up, you should be seeing it out the peripheral, peripheral of your uh, right eye. So you need to be bringing your fingers up to your eyes and then your same thing for the left arm. Every time you do a drill, you want to exaggerate this motion. What this is going to do is get you in the habit of good arm swing. Every time that we run, the arms are go is going to help us with speed and help us with our pace because it's helping propel our body forward. Uh, it continues the momentum. So we want to make sure that our arms are in sync and we are uh, swinging our arms properly. You don't want to ever swing your arms side to side. Uh, or cross your body because once you start crossing your body what's that what that's going to do is create too much uh, rotational movement and what that can do is begin to start moving your hips which is going to move the way that you impact onto the ground so if you're moving your arms side to side uh it's going to throw off you where you impact so you're not you're no longer landing center of mass and it's going to decrease how optimally you run because you want to be running in a, essentially a straight line so if you're moving side to side and it creates too much rotational momentum you're essentially going to be moving in a zigzag pattern and this is just going to you know decrease your speed and increase your work time so the objective of having good technique when we run is to be efficient with our power so that we can run longer and can reduce our uh, proneness to injury. So being efficient when we run is very important. Hey guys, that's gonna wrap up the video for today. Like I said in the beginning, this was a very basic running tutorial. This will get you out there uh, and give you some things to think about. And it's gonna probably reduce some of the stress that uh, you have been getting especially in the lower back or the knees for instance uh, the next video I'm gonna be dropping is gonna be uh, going more into depth on what we should look like when we're running our leg movements such as the a patterning and it's gonna go over a bunch of different drills that we can practice with in order to improve our technique because the objective is to run efficiently as possible so that we're wasting less energy so that we are reducing our potential for injury. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Until the next one, out.